the bat. Disclaimer, I am not a doctor. I am a retired science teacher, but I don't think that even qualifies much. So, what I am telling you here is just what my experience was, what I've learned from my doctor, and what I've learned um, from my own research. Well, this happened to me a couple of days ago. This was elective surgery. I had two procedures done, carpal tunnel in my wrist, and on my elbow, a ulnar nerve transposition. Now, this usually happens to older people because it's a repetitive stress injury. You've been using something for a long time and eventually catches up with you, but you don't have to be older. If you have a, an occupation where you go out every day and use the same um, muscles and joints, or if you're in a sport and you play it a lot, uh, weightlifters, this is very common for too. I don't usually make a video like this, but I thought I'd share some of this with you because there are an awful lot of people who actually have this procedure done. And another reason I'm doing this video is there are a lot of people out there who either should get therapy for this, if that'll work, or should get this procedure done. And the reason is, the damage that it causes to the nerves that it affects usually can't be reversed. So an operation like this is meant to arrest the problem, fixing the problem, making it go backwards in time, usually, usually doesn't happen. So the longer you wait, the more damage is done. From what I understand though, People usually do get relief from pain, but the numbness and tingling, which may improve a little bit, usually doesn't. Now, what causes this? Well, on the elbow right here, there's a nerve. And it's a pretty good sized nerve, almost the size of maybe a pencil lid, but it's very soft. And it runs along the back of the arm and it feeds the, the, the fingers. Now, this nerve you've encountered before. If you've ever hit your funny bone, well, there is no funny bone, but there is a nerve that runs along the bone in your elbow. You hit it just right and knock it, and, you, and you've noticed it. It really, really hurts. Well, this nerve, when you flex your elbow back and forth, actually um, follows and goes through some ligaments that connect these, these bones together. And that movement through the ligaments can cause it to become irritated over time. The ligament sort of calluses up and the nerve gets squashed. So if you know anything about carpal tunnel syndrome, an ulnar nerve can do the same thing. You can almost call it like carpal tunnel of the elbow, even though carpal means bones in the hand. So, what got me to this point and how might you get here? Well, it started with me um, because I had had, uh, eight years ago, a, uh, a disc fused in, in my neck. It's called stenosis of the neck, caused by a kind of arthritis. And um, I went back for an MRI for a kind of a, an assessment of how it was doing because it can get worse, and I have noticed it a little bit. The assessment actually came back um, pretty good. It hadn't progressed that much. No, nothing to do about it now. But um, the, the doctor, the neurologist, started testing my reflexes and on my arm and, and uh, on my hand, and he noticed there was something amiss. So he sent me to another doctor that does an EMG, and that's a test that tests the nerves and the reactions of the muscles. And what they do is they put little electrodes, or sometimes in the case of this one, almost like um, acupuncture needles, um, in the shoulder, and in the elbow, and in the hand, and then they connect a current to it. And uh, they watch what happens on the computer. There's graphs, but you can also feel like a little shock. And um, she had to um, turn it up quite a ways, and I felt quite a jolt, but it had minimal effect on, on a reflex action in, in certain fingers. 
She also did a test where she had me spread my hand and she'd squeeze it together and I was trying to, I was supposed to spread my fingers out and hold her back and she noticed um, a definite weakness to it. Um, and she did a few other tests like that. Now, one dead giveaway, um, if it's progressed quite a bit, um, as you can see in this picture, my hands look very much like this picture. Um, the arm that they operated on, when the ulnar nerve isn't working well or sending a signal, um, your muscles atrophy, and it's noticeable on the hand that is affected because you can see this sinking of this lack of muscle tissue between the bones. And if you put both hands out on, on a table and look at them and see if there's a difference where one is more sunken than the other, um, then it's a sign of uh, nerve damage. Well, it came back that the ulnar nerve um, was uh, in a level of severe as far as, as uh, not sending a signal through. Um, and what it usually affects with almost everybody is these last two fingers. They can be tingly, they can be numb, and in some people they can be a lot of pain. I've never had any pain with this, and I've always been, been you know, glad about that. Um, this, this, all this nerve stuff that, that's happened with my neck or in my hand with a carpal tunnel of the elbow really never caused hardly any pain for me at all. Some people have some severe pain with this. So what do they do about this? Well, when they go in, they try to do as little as possible. One way is to take the fascia that's covering uh, the nerve that's causing the blockage and they try to remove the roof of it so that uh, it makes an easier place for the, for the nerve to slide through. They can also cut the fascia and relocate the nerve and then sew it back up. And a third operation, which is much more radical, I don't think they do it very much, is they actually move the nerve outside of the muscle, but they have to sew the uh, muscle and tendon back on. And that's when you get a, um, uh, an operation where you'll have a, a brace or almost like a cast that has to be immobilized for a while so that the uh, recovery time uh, is much, much more uh, than the other two. Now, usually the doctor who's operating um, has an idea that they're gonna do the minimal thing. They're just gonna release the pressure by making it easier for the nerve to slide through. But they wait till they get in there and decide exactly what they'll need to do. They might have to go one level or higher in the operation. I think a lot of people just have a ulnar nerve release like I did, and that works out pretty good. And I read in the doctor's report, because we have it posted online after our operation, um, and you can go look at it. Um, they did this, and then they flexed the arm while I was on the operating table several times to make sure that there was an, uh, uh, the nerve was released and it moved when the arm was flexed, it was able to slide back and forth in that area. And um, they indicated on the report that it was doing it quite well. And then they just um, uh, closed, closed up the, uh, the incision on the arm and that was pretty much it. So if you have to have this done, what can you expect? Well, I was set up for a consultation for having the operation done. And then uh, a short time after that, I went in to have the operation in the morning. The operation actually took about 40 minutes, but they, they left an hour for it. And you know, you go in and you have to you know, get into the Johnny and then they come in and, and take some information and take some of your vitals and kind of tell you what to expect. Um, then they wheel you down to the operating room when it's your turn. And um, on the way, they, they gave me, um, through an IV needle, which they had put in my hand, um, a, uh, a mild sedative, which I noticed made me a little relaxed and loopy. And I noticed particularly when I got to the operating room and had to transfer myself over, I had to think about what they were saying and what they wanted to do. Um, and uh, then um, they put a mask on your face and you take some deep breaths and you're gone. And uh, two seconds later, you're awake in another room, actually, about a 40 minutes or an hour later. You're awake um, in another room. And what they did in the operating room was they put an intubation tube um, in your 
in your throat, which they do for any operation that they have to put you under general anesthesia. And um, they put the arm out somewhere where they could get to it on the side and some table or some kind of support. And they perform the operation. And um, then they close you up and, and they haul you to another area where you recover. The next thing you know, a nurse is like calling your name, you know, just wake up, wake up. It takes about 10 minutes to stop getting groggy, give you some graham crackers and orange juice maybe. And uh, I don't know how long I was in there, but it took a little while, maybe about 20 minutes, 30 minutes. And then they have you get up. Actually, they don't have you get up right away. They kind of <laughs> they kind of you know, put your your underwear and your pants on while you're on the bed. So when you get up, it's down at your ankles, and then you finish getting dressed. Um, but that was about it. Of course, when they talked with me um, before I went in, um, I received the written and verbal instructions about what to do afterwards, and of course, what to expect. Um, and Usually people don't have these done together, but I had had a carpal tunnel operation in both hands um, years ago. And during their test, they realized that the nerves on, on my hand had, um, had uh, again, become compressed. And, and so I had this done at the same time. Basically, they make a little cut and the nerves that go through the hands of the fingers um, pass under some fascia. They can get calloused and when the nerves um, Get, get pinched, um, the signal doesn't go through as good. So they actually take that fascia and they clean things out and scrape it away to release the pressure on that. But that, that's a whole nother ball game. So pain. Well, um, before I uh, went into surgery, I had looked at a, a lot of stuff online and a lot of YouTube videos. I think I looked at all of them. And um, I heard a lot of people talk about varying degrees of pain. Everybody had pain. Some of them said it was, it was horrible, um, which I hesitate to tell you here because that's not very nice to hear and it may put you off from having this done. But the alternative is not better. I have had absolutely no pain. Uh, they gave me five Oxycontin, I believe, pills that I had to pick up. Um, and I expected, you know, I was ready for bear that night. I said, okay, when I go to bed, I, you know, I'll, I'm going to keep these, you know, to the side of the bed. And if I need to take one, I took a couple pile and all and um, never bothered me. The next day I thought, well, okay, you know, it's got to wear off in a day or two, nothing. So this is the end of day two. And I've had, it's almost as if they had wheeled me into the operating room, did nothing, bandaged me up and told me I had an operation because I have felt no discomfort and no pain. The bandage is a little tight, but that's about it. So I feel fortunate that way, but your mileage may vary. Um, and the YouTube videos will scare you. So this one is to tell you that having maybe a lot, a lot less pain, or in my case, none, maybe that's a possibility. I'd like to show you the results of the operation, but I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to I get my stitches out for about 10 days. Um, then there's a little therapy, which uh, I may or may not need, but a couple of sessions um, have been settled, set up for me um, in case I do. Um, you probably wouldn't want to look at the scars anyway. Well, I hope this might have helped someone. Remember, I'm no expert. I'm just telling you about what I've gone through. Um, if you have any questions um, in the comments that I might be able to answer, feel free to ask. I'll get back to you. Mm -hmm.